So welcome to class three of investment appraisal. We are going to solve um, IRR and MIRR in this class, okay? Because um, we have already done MPV. So I basically just broke the class into bits. Because if it's too long, you might not be able to watch it. So we have already solved MPV and we got a, a positive MPV of 3,124,000, okay? So what is IRR? I'll just explain what IRR is and we'll continue the question. So we need to write evaluation of investments. Evaluation of investments in MTD through IRR. Write it in full as internal rate of return, right? That's MB. That's what they have to calculate. So I'll just explain briefly what IRR is. So IRR is um, the rate at which your MPV will be zero. That's actually a very good way to understand it. IRR is that rate at which your MPV will be zero. Internal rate of return is a particular rate, X percent, right? A rate at which your MPV will be zero naira. Okay, so it's, it's a discounting rate at which your MPV will be zero naira. You can see that this is a rate. 11% is a rate at which your MPV is positive. So you're trying to get a rate at which your MPV is zero. And when your MPV is equal to zero, it means there's a break even in the investment, right? Or in the projects that you're about to undertake. When your MPV is zero, it means your inflows is equal to your outflows. There's no profit. So the break even point, that's when your MPV is zero. So the decision criteria is that when your IRR, right, is greater than your cost of capital, you should accept the project that is a good one. But when your IRR is less than your cost of capital, you should reject the project. So let's imagine that the cost of capital, what we used to discount here is 11%. And don't forget that cost of capital is the minimum required rate of return. If you have checked the cost of capital class, right, that I have done, I explained cost of capital very well. Cost of capital is your minimum required rate of return. So if your IRR is, let's say, 15%, it means your return, IRR, internal rate of return is greater than your minimum required rate of return, what you're even expecting. So you can accept the project. That makes sense. So if cost of capital is 11%, but you're getting your IRR to be, let's say, 10%, as you can see, is less you reject. Because if you are breaking even at 10%, but what you require is 11%. It looks like you're not discounting the project enough. If you think about it very well, it makes sense that way. Okay? So that is just the decision criteria. Just on that your IRR needs to be greater than your cost of capital for you to accept the project. Okay? So now let's solve the IRR. This one is just explanation. You can choose to know formulas, right? So to solve IRR, IRR is done by extrapolating. It's like you're extrapolating between your guesses. You're just guessing. Right? You are trying to look for a particular rate. Keep that back of your mind. That you are trying to look for a particular rate, and you you get that rate by guessing. Okay. So the formula to use to guess your IRR is by saying IRR equals to lower rates plus MPV of lower rates over MPV of lower rates minus MPV of higher rates times higher rate minus lower rate. So people that have watched my um, cost of debt class or my bond valuation class, those of us, we already know this formula, we already understand it. But I'll still explain it for the sake of people that just came for investment appraisal alone, okay? So your lower rate, you look for it. MPV associated with the lower rate, you look for it. MPV of the lower rate, right? MPV associated with the higher rate, you look for it. Higher rate. Look for it, lower risk, look for it. Now, I can tell you that because we have calculated MPV, we already have a lower rate, which is 11%. And why is it a lower rate? It's a lower rate because you are trying to get another MPV, the MPV of the higher rate. And the MPV of the higher rate must be a negative MPV. See, you already have a positive MPV, right? Of 3 million. Now, you are looking for a negative MPV, a very bad MPV. Then, somewhere in between, is where your MPV will be zero. It's the break even point. That's why I say you are extrapolating between two guesses. Okay? So if we already have this 3 million, 124,000 as the first MPV we have, it means it's positive, it's good. But we want the worst case. Let's get a negative MPV. And to get a negative MPV, you need to discount very high. 
right? You need to push your discount factor high. That is why I know that it is the higher MPV that we are guessing, right? So I can say that we have what? We have our lower rate. We have MPV of lower rate, MPV of lower rate, but we don't have MPV of higher rate. We don't have higher rate, we have lower rate. So how do I get my higher rate and how do I get my MPV of higher rate? Is by what? Guessing, like I said. So you guess a rate. So the typical thing or the traditional thing that is usually done is to double it since you are going higher. If you're going lower, you just reduce it, slash the rate into two. So since we want to double it, right? So let's just double it to like 22%. That makes sense. So let's just discount by 22%. That is high enough. So if we discount by 22%, you might get something very negative. So let's just stay on 20%. 20% makes sense, right? So let's say our higher rate is 20%. So you already have your MPV of your lower rate because you have discounted. What you need to do now is to discount with 20%. So that makes sense. So it's, you discount your cash flows, your net cash flows at 20%. Huh? You discount your net cash flows at 20%. So now that you have a negative MPV, you take it right into your formula. And as you can see, this negative is so negative, And it just tells me that my MPV, right, will be kind of close to um, 11%, which is your lower rate. It's so, it's so far. So you don't have to go so far before you break even, if that makes sense. So your lower rate, which is 11% plus MPV of lower rate, I think that was 3 million, 3 million 124 over MPV of lower rate, 3 million 124 minus MPV of your higher rate, which is minus 22,463, right? Into higher rate 20% minus lower rate 11%. So your IRR will fall between 20% and 11%. That makes sense. And I think it's going to be closer to 11% than to 20%. And that's because you can see it in the MPVs. They are so far apart. Okay, that was what I was trying to explain earlier. So I believe that you know how to put this in your calculator. You start by dismantling this denominator. Okay, so that's 3124 minus minus that's plus 22463 okay then you say 3124 divided by answer okay then you multiply by this which is nine percent nine okay then you add to eleven percent right and that's twelve point zero nine percent that's like twelve point one percent so your IRR your IRR I'm so sorry your IRR is what? 12.1%. So that's your IRR and that's all. That's all to get in your IRR. Now let's go to the next method, which is the third part of the question. C says, calculate the modified internal rate of return, MIRR. So let me explain what MIRR is all about. MIRR came as a result of the limitations with IRR, okay? You know, it's modified internal rate of return. You are modifying the internal rate of return method. And that limitation, I believe that you read advantages and disadvantages of all these methods because they have their advantages and their disadvantages. So one of the disadvantages of um, IRR is the fact that it is not suitable to evaluate projects or investments that have multiple outflows, you know. The way we see it, the traditional way is that, oh, the outflow is in year one. But what if there's an outflow in year four? Or what if there's an outflow in like a major investment also in year two? You know, sometimes the company wants to buy asset and they can't buy it once. Maybe they don't have this over 120 million or 140 million at once. They have to break it into year one and year three. So there's what the modified internal rate of return is saying is that there should be a revenue phase and there should be an investment phase, okay? So the formula to calculate MIRR, I think I can clean up all this formula to calculate your MIRR is this, right? MIRR is equal to the present value of the revenue phase over the present value of the investment phase, all raised to power 1 over n into 1 plus r minus 1. It's a very simple formula, okay? Minus 1 present values of the, all the revenues over the present value of all the investments 
always power 1 over the number of years, right, into 1 plus r minus 1, okay? So when you have a formula, the first thing is to get the variables, get all the variables involved, and then you start solving. It's very simple, okay? So you ask yourself, what is the present value of the revenue faces? That's why I said you should not clean your own notes, okay? Mm -hmm. So those present values now, you're going to add them together. So add it in your notes. Those present values are the one you have in your notes as 10,947, 71,124, 43,954, 9, and So you add all of that together, okay? You get a particular amount. Then your investment face is just 140,000. Okay, so you say divided by one round, four thousand. Then you raise it to the power of what five. I know that there are four years in the investment, but it is five cash flows, you know, because year five was extended. It's five cash flows you have, so you raise it to the particular amount you got for when you added the revenues, the present values of the revenue over the particular amount when you got when you added the present values of the investment which was just one forty thousand naira. i'll solve another example after this that shows the investment in year one and investment in year three okay then you have one over five because it's five years that you got all those variables from i know that the investment is four years but it's five years that the cash flows you are using they represent five years okay so one plus r what is the cost of capital 11 percent so that's one plus 0.11 that makes sense minus one right then you punch this into your calculator so when you do that you're going to get a particular rate that is somehow close to your irr so that's your mirr so let's solve an example on mirr that actually shows the um, situations where you need the mirr because if you're looking at this situation you don't really need them IRR because your investment is only in year zero. Who is that now? Because your investment is only in year zero, right? So MIRR is not so, the relevance is not so obvious. So what I'm trying to do is that I'm going to read out another question where you can see your, how to use your MIRR, okay? So let's clean off this one. Then in the next class, we'll move to payback period, discounted payback period and project duration which was what the question still asked us to solve, right? So let me read out this question. So you have year zero, one, two, three, four. So in year zero, let's say you have an initial outflow of 40,000 Naira. Then in year one, you have 8,000 Naira. You have 25,000 Naira in year two. You have another outflow in year three of 20,000 Naira. Maybe somehow they needed sixty thousand, but they didn't have it in at the beginning right then in year four you have thirty thousand inflow and in year five you have eighteen thousand outflow right and they're telling you that the cost of capital that is what you're going to use to discount is ten percent so this is a typical situation where mirr would it will show you know why it will show it will show because your outflows are in two different stages unlike the form, former one where your outflows is just in one phase but in exam if you see that kind of question when they say you calculate mirr you still solve it though it does not mean you not solve it you understand so you recall the formula for your mirr right it's present value of revenue over present value of investment into one over r raised power one over r into 1 plus r 1 over n into 1 plus r minus 1 okay so your present value of your revenue phase what does it mean to get present value it means you are trying to discount you guys should ignore those noises so you, you are trying to discount okay to, to get your present value of your revenues so when you are trying to discount you discount at what 10 percent so you discount at 10 percent so your discount factors will be at 10 okay so for year zero it will be 1.000 for year one it will be 0 0.909 year two 0 0.826 year three 0 0.751 year four 0 0.6 something I, i'm not let me put it in calculator 1.1 raised power minus 4 point six eight three okay six eight three the raised power minus five is point 
0.621 right so now let's discount let's discount these cash flows okay so here will be what forty thousand here will be 0 0.909 times eight thousand that will give us 72 72 then 25,000 times 0.826 that will give us 2650 right 0.751 times 20,000 that will give us 15020 0.683 times 30,000 that will give us 20,490 this year three, you know it's negative, it's an outflow, right? Then year five point six two one times eighteen thousand point six two one times eighteen thousand that will give you eleven thousand one seven eight, right? So now you now add present values of revenue, only revenues that's seventy two seventy two plus 20,650, plus 20,490, plus 11,178, right? So that will give you 55,590, okay? So you have 55,590 over in investments, right? That's 40,000 plus 15,020, and that's 55,020. 55020. All raised to power what? 1 over 1 over 5. That makes sense. Into 1 plus R. R is 10%. That's 1 plus. You won't write 10%. You write 0 0.1 minus 1. That's it. So if we had done it in the previous example, the current example we are on, which is Japa Limited, you will still get your answer. I just wanted to show you when you have negatives and negatives, okay? So, how do you do this? You start by dismantling this one. So you have 55,590 divided by 55,020, okay? All raised power minus five. So how do you put this on your calculator? One over five is 0 0.2. So you just say raised power 0 0.2, okay? Then you multiply by what? 1.1 times 1.1, mm -hmm. Then you say minus one, okay? So you can see your MIRR is what? 10.2, that's 0.102, right? So that's 10, then you multiply by 100 to put it to percentage, right? So that's 10.2 percent. As you can see, it's close to your cost of capital. It's close to what you used to discount. So the project is okay because it's more than your cost of capital, right? It's more than your cost of capital. So the project is okay. You know, you accept your you accept an investment when your IRR or your MIRR is greater than your cost of capital, right? So if it was IRR, it means that it is at this point that the investment would break even, okay? There will be a break even. So it means that when your IRR is higher than your cost of capital, it means you should accept the project. If you think about it, it means that you are discounting enough. So since the company is requiring a particular percentage, their investment is safe. So in the next class, we'll go to the remaining part of the question, which is on payback period, discounted payback period, and project duration. Okay, And after that class, we can now go to the other aspects, risk and uncertainty, adjusted present value, um, all those other things I showed you in class one, right? So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next class, which you can just click somewhere on the screen. Bye.